What is going on guys, Eagle Aquatics back here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys uh, my water change on this tank. Uh, you guys have always wanted to see this this uh, video. You guys oh, do a water change, you got to see it. So I'm going to go through the steps I take to do a water change on this. I do it once every two to three weeks whenever I have the most time. And uh, today we're going to be doing a 20 gallon water change on this. So I'll head downstairs show you how I do it. All right guys, we're down in the fish storage room down here. Uh, so I'm gonna fill up 20 gallons in these jugs. I got four uh, water jugs. Uh, I utilized four the water changes to lug the water upstairs and then pour it into one of my buckets. But this is the RO system I got hooked up. Our, our Aqua FX Barracuda into a holding vat down here. This is a 30 gallon brute garbage can, garbage can with a uh, float valve on it. It was full. I got one five gallon uh, container filled up. So let's fill up another one. Got to do four of these. All right, guys, got this jug filled up. Take it out of there. Put it on the ground. Grab a new one. These are five gallon water safe or uh, aquarium safe water jugs meant for storing water. So I got a pump down there. It's like a 200 gallon per hour pump right here. And really I just plug it into the wall. Got like a five foot long hose. And then just uh, turn it on, pumps water into the jug. When it's full, unplug it. Boom, there you go. It's pretty easy. Anybody with a larger reef tank, highly highly recommend a reverse osmosis system. They're not that expensive and the filters last a long time. Um, and you always have water, that's the thing. That's the thing I love about it. Whether it be for top off water changes, dosing mixes, uh, if you have fresh water, it's great. But you get the purest water and you know you have the purest water rather than just buying it from a fish store, taking a chance. There could be high TDS levels on the water. You never know. This, this way with your water, you know it's zero TDS or near zero, so you know you're putting the best water you can into your reef tank. And uh, that's the main reason I love it all. Uh, especially if you do the float valve system, you can just leave it run. I don't let it run all the time when it goes past the float valve because of TDS creep in the RO, mem in the RO membrane, but uh, I'll shut it off drain it and then when the water goes down like this uh, run it waste a few gallons until the TDS goes down and then hook it all back up and start putting water back in the bucket but it fills up pretty quick I, I usually let it run overnight if it's completely empty by the morning it'll be full it's 100 gallons per day it's, it's pretty much what everybody needs this is the last jug right here Get them, take the pump out. I don't leave the pump in the bucket. Take the pump and hose. Take it off. Usually leave the pump in here so it can dry off, drain into the sink, and make sure water. Now I'll hang the hose up so no algae grows inside of it either. All right guys, the next thing I do is pour all the salt inside of my uh, water change mixing bucket right here. This is another 32 gallon uh, brute garbage can. Uh, I mix Red Sea. This is, uh, you guys probably know by the buckets, this is blue bucket salt, not purple bucket. Um, because it has, uh, it's more formulated for people that dose their aquariums rather than not. That's why I chose to get this. By far the best salt I have ever had. It mixes extremely fast and clean, and uh, it lasts me a while. It's a little more expensive, but I believe it's a lot higher quality than some other salts, so uh, definitely my favorite. So, general rule of thumb, it's a, almost a half a cup per gallon of salt uh, for 20 gallons, but usually 17 half cups get me to 1.024 is where I want to be. And uh, to make the water changes extremely easy, I got this 32 gallon uh, brute garbage can. If you guys wanna follow this, I have a complete water change system. This is my mixing bucket, and then I have an emptying bucket over there. That's for wastewater. 
But uh, this way you're not hauling buckets everywhere, you're just mixing into this one sole container and then you put another power head in there, attach it to a hose and uh, mix it in here. And then after it's all mixed, you got the water empty, you're ready to refill the tank, put the pump back in here, put the hose, plug it in, shoot the water back into the tank. It's easy as that. I'll show you guys how I set it up. Let me put the salt in here quick. Yeah, guys, believe it or not, I literally had exactly 17 half cups left with a little bit to spare, so that was nuts. Yeah, guys, here's the salt in the bucket. 17 cups, or half cups, I should say. Red Sea Blue Bucket salt in here. Right now, guys, I'm gonna grab my uh, mixing pump slash water adding pump. This is a Rio 2500. All right, guys, now I'm gonna pour all the water in. Let me go grab some of the jugs. And literally these, I just pour them right in. And if you're wondering what that is, I'm actually doing a process in my truck called uh, undercoating. So what you do is you strip all the rust off, off the frame and everything, and then coat over it so it doesn't rust anymore. It's kind of like a tarry like paint almost. So that's what got all over my arm. So that kind of sucked. to mix in. Flip that. There we go. So that's all white. Still got to mix. But this stuff literally mixes in like 15 minutes. It's crazy. So I also have this to extend the cord. I have it on this controllable switch so you can turn it off, turn it back on, and then it's just plugged into my outlet, outlet mess over there. So that's how I mix the water and that's how I hold it until and mix it until I have to throw it in the tank. So this is a great method if you don't want to lug around buckets and everything, don't waste your time. These, you could get these at Menards, these buckets, brute garbage cans, you could get them pretty much anywhere and they're pretty cheap. I mean, it's only like $30 for this garbage can. And they're food grade. Uh, pretty much everybody in the reef tank hobby uses them. All right guys, I got the other can up here. This, this is for the wastewater. You can see all the sand and excess detritus left behind, left behind from past water changes. This is another 32 gallon uh, trash can, but this is one of those cheapo ones. It's like a $10 trash can because realistically, you don't need any special for wastewater. You don't need any special type of garbage can that's food grade or anything because literally you're putting garbage water in here and dumping it out. So you can get yourself a cheap garbage can, $10 one, and then you can put it on a platform like this. These are pretty cheap as well and hold a ton of weight. They're only like 10 bucks at Menards or something. And then my dad fabricated this out of wood on top. It's it's uh, it's like sheet, sheet wood or some plywood, something like that. And then he actually screwed it down to the cart so the trash can sits flush with this thing and then you can wheel it around like that. The reason you wanna wheel this thing around is because you can't really lug this thing out to the street and dump it out. Uh, once you have this much water in here, you have to put the hose, put the pump back in here with the hose and uh, pump the water in the toilet, get rid of it that way. So this way you can wheel it over to the toilet, put the pump in there, pump all the, pump all the excess bad water in the toilet and you're done. And then put this thing back downstairs and that's it. I also have the siphon tube to take out the old water too. You guys will see that also. All right guys, before I start with prepping the tank for a water change, I wanna say sorry about that glare. Glare is terrible this time of day, especially with the lights being off. I do it in the morning before the lights come on, so after I'm done with the water changes, the corals could start opening up. But this is by far, by far, the most important thing you could possibly do, and this will make your reef tank extremely successful. You get a big pipette or turkey baster like this, um, and go around every little crevice in the tank, blow off like this, you'll see. The reason for doing this, uh, 
main idea from CJ's Aquarium. Shout out to that dude. He gave me the idea of blowing off all the rocks before water change. By doing this, you suspend all the detritus and excess waste and excess food, every little crap thing in the rocks, you're blowing off and suspending it in the water to be removed by the filter sock or you siphoning out the tank. Or it falls into the sand bed and you siphon it up. So this is highly, highly effective. That's one reason my tank has become so successful is because of clean rocks. You can't just let, you can't just do a water change and take out the water and uh, expect stuff to change because realistically you're leaving all the crap inside the rocks and it's just sitting there decomposing, releasing crap into the water, nitrates, phosphates, all that crap. Uh, so you got to get in there, uh, blow all that detritus and everything out, suspend in the water column so it can be removed and this will lower your nitrates and phosphates and everything. So it's just a great, excellent method um, and it's proven to be extremely successful, at least in my opinion. So a lot of people don't, but I strongly believe in doing this. Uh, I have found great success by doing so because you're cleaning out the rocks and you'd be amazed if, you, if you've never done this before, you'd be amazed at how much crap collects inside of the rocks. It's unbelievable and it's pretty disgusting also because yeah if you don't do this all that shit all that stuff's just sitting in the rocks polluting the water so hope you guys could see that side of it yeah here you go let me uh, zoom in a little bit over here yeah, you can see all the crap coming out some of it's sand you'll probably see the bigger sand particles but there's a lot of tiny little crap and decomposing detritus and all kinds of crap inside the rocks that you do not want in your tank because that is the reason you have nitrates and phosphates so that a lot of this one from down here is all, that's all sand but but there's a lot of crap especially from not doing a water change in two weeks there's going to be a decent amount of stuff in the rocks so you gotta get all that stuff out before. It doesn't take that long either. If you get a big turkey baster, you get through the whole tank in 10 minutes. Now is also a good time to uh, get with the razor blade, all the corners of your tank, the place you can't really get with the flipper or whatever magnet cleaner you use. I usually go all along every side and towards the bottom right here, getting all that hard algae that starts to grow like coralline and that, that weird green like circle-ish uh, algae that's really hard to get off with the magnet cleaners usually get all that with the uh, razor and then that's also suspended in a water column so it can be removed. Alright guys I got all the rocks cleaned with the with the turkey baster. This side, this side, it took me about 10 minutes it's really quick you just go over lightly uh, blow them all off you see all the crap come off and get suspended in the air and then that's pretty much it and then I went along got rid of the hard uh, calcified algae on the side like that uh, hard green algae and hard coralline algae that accumulates on the side with a razor blade. Got that off and now uh, the salt water is mixed. See how clear it gets, it mixed within 15 minutes, mixes really fast. Uh, now we got to go in with the siphon tube and the empty bucket, empty out 20 gallons out of here. What I do usually uh, since I have sand, go through all the sand, shh, vacuum it all out vacuum all the sand out that's the way you get rid of everything inside the tank and it leaves it really really clean so that's what I'm gonna do next all right guys now I'm gonna go around with the siphon tube vacuum out all the sand into the waste garbage can so got it on the wheels right now Pull it over there start going to town this one's cool because it has a squeeze bulb right here so you don't have to mess around, get it done quick. And you just see all the crap that accumulates in the sand. Realistically, the only downside to having sand, in my opinion, is all the crap gets stuck in it easier, as opposed to a bare bottom. But I mean, if you get the right filtration, you're not going to see the nitrates and phosphates, but there's still sand. There's still crap inside the sand that you want to get out. But yeah, if you got sand, vacuum it every time you do a water change. 
that's best practice because if you never do, then stuff really starts to collect in there, gases and everything, and it could really harm the tank. All right, guys. Now we're, at, we're ready to add the water back in, just straighten out everything, fix the sand bed, fixed all the corals that moved around. Uh, now we're ready to put the 20 gallons of water back in. So, I'm gonna shut off the hose. Usually put it right up against the side so it's blowing on the glass. Flip the switch, bam, comes right down. Now just wait to fill it up. Wait till it's filled. All right guys, got it all filled back up. Now we're gonna plug the pump back in. There it goes. You'll see a ramp off right there. Flip the uh, high doors back on and the controller. There we go. And that's it. He's running again. Nice. So that is a complete water change. Done. That's how I do my water change on the 125. So this is a 20 gallon water change. I wanted to show you guys mainly how my system how I do it, how I clean the tank before I do the water change, how I blow off the rocks and everything, and how, what I use for my water changes. I, this is the easiest system I've ever used. It literally could probably take me without filming 30 minutes to do everything because of these two garbage cans. You have your main mixing can and you have your waste can. So you mix, instead of messing around with all these buckets, all the different pumps and everything, one can, one pump, one hose, mix it. When that's all done, uh, take out all the water, drain it into here, mark the line in here so you know where to stop with the siphon tube. And then when you got 20 gallons out, put the hose into this tank, plug it in, fill the 20 gallons back up, and then put this hose and the pump in the waste bucket, empty out in the toilet, wheel it over there, you're done. That's it. Easy, easy as it gets. Invest in a few cans, invest in an RO system, it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you have a larger tank. And uh, this is by far the easiest method of water changes, besides auto water changes, that I could think of. And I think you guys will find this very interesting. Uh, it'll give you guys a new perspective on how to do your water changes. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know you guys have been wanting this video for a long time, so finally made it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry the lights aren't on. I always do this before the lights turn on because uh, you know you know you're scaring all the fish, you're scaring all the corals back in. You know I'd rather just do it in the mornings when everything is closed already, rather than the afternoon where they're all open and then you go through, ravage the tank, and then they're all closed again. So the glare's bad. I'm sorry. That's why I didn't film too much of the tank and everything because the glare and you can't really see. So I mainly just wanted to show you guys how I do this. So uh, thank you guys a lot for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Eagle Aquatics. Give me some suggestions. Uh, if I left out anything on this video you have questions on, just leave a comment below. I answer every single question you guys know. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.